I'll cut to the chase and get to the point. Today on The Toku Professor, we'll be covering the entire history of the kaiju Giron, Gamera's unusual blade-headed foe. We'll touch both on the monster's development behind the scenes, and on his role in his debut film and other media, and at the end we'll even get into a bunch of Giron merchandise. I'm very excited to take a stab at this topic, so let's chop to it. <laughs> Giron first appeared in the film which bears his name, Daiei's Gamera vs. Giron, one of the goofiest monster movies out there, which released in Japan on March 21st, 1969. Like all the other Showa Gamera films, the screenplay for the film was handled by screenwriter Nisan Takahashi. Early versions of the script featured an alternate title for the movie featuring Giron's original name, Giant Evil Beast X. This initial moniker lasted for several revisions of the script until the creature was eventually renamed to Giant Evil Beast Giron, or just Giron for short, evidently a shortened version of the Japanese word for guillotine. Another change was to scrap Giron's original first opponent, the flying squirrel kaiju manga, probably for budgetary purposes, in favor of Space Gauss. Definitely a cool kaiju, but he didn't make the... cut. <laughs> Akira Inoue was the art director for the Showa Gamera movies, but he seems to have suffered some kind of minor back injury prior to production on Gamera vs. Giron, while working on art for the 1970 World's Fair. So, though Inoue was apparently still somewhat involved, a different artist, Tomohisa Yano, was brought in to help design Giron. And from the looks of all this concept art, the two artists had a bunch of very different ideas for what the kaiju could look like. Yano, or Inoue, or whoever drew these images, tried out several designs with an insect motif, some flying fish-like versions of Giron, and even a, um, whatever this creepy thing staring us down is. Yikes. Sources indicate that Yano was initially going for a monster much more biological than the finished product and that his original idea was for the new kaiju to look like a flounder, so I guess these fishy designs were from that period. The Piscine creature would have been portrayed by a suit actor who would enter the monster costume from the side. Ultimately, this idea proved to be unfeasible. Akira Inoue evidently got the idea to have the monster be a living weapon from the movie's staff, and stuck the head of a knife on the creature he was creating. The design was further refined, and eventually the Giron design we all know and love emerged and I think Inoue was pretty happy with his knife choices. <laughs> the finished product looks really sharp, huh? <laughs> Ugh, you're punishing us with these knife jokes, Professor. We students are here to learn about Giron, remember? Not to watch a comedy show. Eh, <laughs> sorry, you're right. Guess I'll cut it out. Uh, I mean, I'll stop, I'll stop. <sighs> anyway, so now the suit could be constructed. Evidently, Giron was the first Gamera monster whose costume was modeled by Kaimai Productions, a company run by Eizo Kaimai, famous for helping to construct the very first Godzilla suit, in addition to other Toho monster costumes. Masao Yagi, designer of Gamera, appears to have been working on designing the kaiju Yongari at the time, hence Daiei's choice to go with a different suit manufacturer. I couldn't find many written details about how this new suit was operated or anything like that, but what I did find were a bunch of neat production images. Let's take a moment to admire these, shall we? Oh, and if you lose sleep every night wondering how they filmed the scene where Giron got stuck upside down, here you go. Maybe now you'll get some shut-eye tonight. Giron's roars in the finished movie are supposedly slowed down lion noises, in addition to modified human laughs and words, including some provided by the film's director. And that's all the real world history for now, so now we're ready to get into the movie itself, from an in-universe perspective. So strap yourselves in and get your space gear on for Gamera vs. Giron. The movie began with two Earthling kids accidentally getting launched into space on an alien UFO and arriving on the mysterious planet Terra, a parallel planet to Earth on the opposite side of the solar system, completely free of traffic accidents. Just think, no more wars on their planet, and no more traffic accidents. Moments after their arrival, a silver space gauss suddenly appeared and began attacking several nearby structures. But the two remaining inhabitants of the planet, whom the kids hadn't met yet, had a secret weapon to combat attacking kaiju, hidden in a hangar beneath a river. And Giron was that weapon. 
the knife monster crawled out of the ground and prepared to take on his opponent, and... Oh, um, hold on a second. Hey! Whew! Uh, why'd you blindfold Kashimakun? The last time I showed that youngster an extremely violent monster fight, things didn't go well at all. And I really doubt he could handle this one. This battle got brutal quickly. Space Gauss struck first, firing its laser beam, but Giron immediately reflected the projectile back and knocked one of Gauss's legs off. Allow me to remind you this is a movie for kids. That was the extent of the battle in the American dub of the film, Attack of the Monsters, but the violent fight went on and got even more crazy in the original Japanese version. Space Gauss took off and appeared to retreat, but circled back for another attack. Then, Giron performed this crazy high-jump backflip maneuver and sliced off one of the flying kaiju's wings with his blade, knocking his opponent out of the sky. Mercilessly, Giron literally began chopping his foe to pieces, beginning with the other wing and then the head. The victorious knife creature laughed menacingly and started slicing what was left of the gauss into round steaks. Giron inspected a cut of meat but found it to be too smelly to consume, so he wandered away from the carcass and spotted the two earth boys, who tried to use a teleporter to get away, and ended up warping closer at first by accident. They escaped on their second try, and Giron returned to his hangar. The boys encountered two alien women, the last surviving people on the planet, who secretly wanted to eat their brains, but the kids didn't know that yet. Another space gauss flew into the area, and the boys got to witness the Terran women release Giron from the pit to chase the winged monster away. Turns out the aliens had been controlling Giron through a remote control and using him as a watchdog. The evil women prepared to go through with their plan to eat the kids' brains, but Gamera arrived on the planet just in time. The aliens postponed their meal and released Giron to battle the space turtle. Moments after Gamera landed, Giron began bashing the turtle kaiju's shell with his blade, eager to learn if Gamera really was made of turtle meat. Showa Gamera's carapace is known to be quite sturdy, but Giron was still able to draw blood. But Gamera fought back by biting Giron's arm and hurling him into a rock and breathing fire. Giron was stuck, but he had an ace up his sleeve, namely shurikens stored in his head. Obviously. The knife monster shot two of them into Gamera's face, causing the turtle intense agony. Giron tried the same tactic again, but this time Gamera was able to knock the throwing stars back at his opponent. Neither kaiju seemed to want to continue the battle after this, and Giron returned to his hangar while the wounded Gamera either jumped or fell into a lake. This battle had bought the boys time to escape from the alien women, but they got recaptured and stuck in a cage. The two attempted to get free again, but accidentally hit a switch that released Giron from his pit. The alien women, meanwhile, decided to abandon the boys and head to Earth to eat the brains of others, but the loose Giron chopped their flying saucer in half, putting an end to that idea. The knife monster then turned his sights on the structure where the boys were trapped, and wrecked the building, releasing the kids. Before Giron could harm them, Gamera burst out of the lake for round two against the blade-headed creature. The turtle dodged several direct hits, blasted his foe with more fire, and began leaping on Giron's back. But somehow the knife monster shoved Gamera away with his leg, flinging the turtle a long distance. But after showing off his gymnastics skills, Gamera was able to swing back into the fight. Uh, this movie's weird, Professor. Shh, quiet, Pencil Leopard. You're ruining this amazing performance. Gamera stuck the landing, but Giron went back to the shurikens again and nailed his opponent in both upper arms, and the turtle leapt back into the lake again to try to pull the weapons out, leaving the boys at the mercy of his opponent. Luckily, the kids were able to open the underground hangar and temporarily trap Giron. The monster soon smashed his way out of the pit, however, and dove into the lake to finish Gamera off once and for all, which didn't quite go according to plan. Gamera flipped Giron upside down and stuck him in the ground blade first. The kids wanted to help their turtle ally, and launched a missile which grazed Giron, killed the last remaining Terran alien, and was caught by Gamera. Giron was running out of time, but the unyielding creature didn't give up, and fired more throwing stars as a last resort. This time though, Gamera was able to sidestep the attack and chucked the missile through Giron's forehead, before igniting it with his fire breath, finally ending the creature's knife. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry, Pencil Leopard, just couldn't help myself. You know, at this point, all I can say is, well played, Professor. Hey, good one. Hehe, <laughs> thanks. So, that was Giron's role in Gamera vs. Giron, which is technically his only movie appearance. 
unless you count stock footage, because two of the three Showa Gamera films that followed, Gamera vs. Jiger and Gamera Super Monster, featured reused clips of the knife monster for budgetary reasons. But what you may be surprised to know is that Giron almost returned in the second entry of the Heisei Gamera trilogy, and to a small extent, sort of did. The director of Gamera 2, Shinji Higuchi, stated that Giron was considered as an enemy kaiju to appear in the film, and though he was eventually replaced with a new, unrelated monster, Mother Legion, it appears that our favorite knife kaiju may have partially influenced a few aspects of Mother Legion's design, as indicated by these concept sketches. Kazunori Ito, the film's writer, stated that while Giron couldn't be considered a basis for Mother Legion, the monster's extraterrestrial origin may indeed have been inspired by the blade-headed creature. Fascinating. Giron was also referenced in Gamera the Brave from 2006. A knife fell off of a counter and stuck to the ground in front of Toto. The young turtle kaiju proceeded to breathe fire in response. Nice little callback there. If you know where to look, you can spot the kaiju in other media as well. There's the MST3K treatment of the monster's debut film, and apparently the kaiju even made a tiny cameo in Pacific Rim Uprising. People sometimes compare the Pacific Rim monster knife head to Giron, but their similarities have been confirmed to be a coincidence. Several Gamera video games feature Giron, such as Gamera the Guardian of the Universe for the Game Boy, and Gamera Battle, a mobile game. And we're all waiting with bated breath, well, at least I am, to see if Giron is one of the five kaiju Gamera will take on in the upcoming Gamera Rebirth series, coming to Netflix later this year. Will the kaiju finally get the grand return it deserves? Only time will tell. Let's wrap up this video with a look at Giron toys. Since there are considerably less Gamera kaiju than Godzilla or Ultraman monsters, Bandai and other companies are able to cover most of them when releasing Gamera toy lines, so there are more varieties of Giron toys than you might think. There was even a Giron figure released in America by Trend Masters. Here is a really good looking, at least in my opinion, memorial box Giron toy that I recently gave someone as a gift. And here is an interesting Gashapon interpretation of the monster. You never know what you'll find if you search Giron on eBay, so he's definitely a fun kaiju to collect on. You know, you made a lot of cleaver points about Giron today, Professor. Oh good, I didn't butcher anything? Well, you were a little blunt sometimes, but otherwise you were sharp. I consider that a significant compliment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, why is the principal coming in here? Wait, what? Professor, my son told me you had him blindfolded almost the entire class. I can't see. Uh, what is the meaning of this horrible conduct on your part? Uh, I was trying to keep him from watching violent content. Content schmontent. You know, I'm fed up with you treating Kishima Kun <laughs> this way. Kishima this is the last straw. Can someone take this off? Give me a chance. I, I was trying to prevent what happened in the Snowgon bio. You. <laughs> you. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> stop. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Eh, uh, what's that sound? I think it's time we cut this video short. Yeah, <laughs> you guys all inspire me. I'd like to introduce you to my students. Do any of you have three minutes to spare? Hmm.